A very effective way to prepare fine-tuning data sets is to use a language model. In my previous videos on fine-tuning, I showed how to use OpenAI to clean data sets and also to put them in a question and answer format that is very effective for fine-tuning chat models. Now, the problem with using OpenAI to clean or prepare data sets is that you're not allowed to use it if you're going to prepare or train a commercial model. So in this video, I'll show you how to do all of the data cleaning and preparation using open source models, in particular, LAMA2. I'll split the video into a few parts. First, I'll go through the prompt preparation to generate questions and answers from an input data set. Then I'll show you how to set up a LAMA 70B server on RunPod. And lastly, I'll run some automated scripts that will convert a data set into a question and answer set using that server. As you know, I'll finish with some pro tips. Later on in this video, I'll be making use of the Llama fine tuning private repository on GitHub. This is a repository that has a lot of helpful code for doing supervised fine tuning, unsupervised fine tuning, fine tuning for function calling. And I'll be including the scripts that allow you to use Llama 2 to prepare data sets rather than using OpenAI. As in my other videos, hopefully I'll give you enough detail, even if you don't purchase the repo, to be able to build everything up yourself. This video, as in the fine tuning tutorials, I'll be making use of a raw data set that is a set of rules for touch rugby. Llama is not familiar with the rules of touch rugby because it's a somewhat obscure sport, so it provides a nice test for fine tuning on a model like Llama 2. My goal here is to take a raw data set which is the text conversion of a PDF of the rules. So here I have the rules of Touch Rugby. And I want to convert these into a question and answer data set, just like this. So here I have a question in the context of Touch Rugby. What's the dead ball line? And here is an answer. To repeat, I want to convert this raw data set into a question and answer data set that I can then use for supervised fine tuning on a chat model. Now, previously I showed how this can be done with OpenAI, but today we want to do it using Llama 2, the 70B model. I'm first gonna show you how to do that in chat format, and then I'll do it in an automated way using scripts after I've set up a server on RunPod. Here, just for demonstration purposes, I've got chat UI running, and I'm connected to a text generation inference instance that's running Llama 2, 70B. Again, I'm trying to convert some raw text into Q&A, and here's the format I'm going to use to do that. I'll take a chunk of text, the input text, then I'm going to provide some context for what this text is about. Then I'll provide my request to convert it into Q&A. And lastly, I'm going to give an example so that the LLM has something to work with and we improve the accuracy of the response. So let's start off with the input text. Here, I'll just go to the raw training data and I'm going to take a chunk here of the text. Let's just take a chunk that looks like this and copy it in as the input text. Note that I'm not doing any cleanup, I'm just putting it in raw. Next off, I'm gonna put in the context. Here, I'm gonna make use of a script I'll show later on. It's the create QA and I'm going to just search for context, which is up at the top of the file. Here's the context. So I'll just copy that snippet and move it over to here. This is important because it will frame the context for the questions that are being generated. We don't want to ask a question where it's unclear whether the question refers to soccer or touch rugby. So this is how we will set the context. Next up, we want to put in the request to generate a Q&A set. So I'm going to again copy the request uh, from the request I have in my script. Let's go down here and copy this. So this is quite long because I have uh, very clear instructions for what I want. Let me read this out. So I'm going to say provide five question and answer pairs based on the text above, which is the raw text. The questions must begin with in the context of, this is how I inject context to the question, 
The answer should borrow verbatim from the text above. I don't want any hallucination. In providing each question, consider that the reader does not see or have access to any of the other questions for context. Again, I'm reinforcing context. Vary the style and format of questions. That improves training. Respond in plain text on a new line for each question and answer. Do not include question numbers. Here's an example of two question answer pairs. And so last off, I have to put in that sample response, which again, I'm going to find from my script. And let me copy that sample. Okay, so here's the sample. In the context of touch rugby and the international playing rules set in 2020, what does the half refer to? I am going to format this just for demonstration purposes. So the half refers to the player takes possession following a roll ball. And the next question is, what's the purpose of the playing rules? And the purpose is to provide a standardized set of rules for the sport of touch football. Okay. So now we have the full uh, request prepared. We have the raw text. We have the context. We have the request. And then we have the sample. So this should good lead to a good response. Let's hope for the best here. I'm running on Lama 2, the 70B model. And I'm just putting in one request. Later, we'll send in multiple in parallel. Okay, so now we can see that that raw text is being converted into question and answer pairs. You'll notice that there is this initial little piece of text that's undesirable. We just want an immediate response with Q&A. So that is handled in the scripts. But you can see that the script is working quite well here. Uh, we have some questions and some answers. And we have um, one, two, three, four, five. So the script is performing as we expect. And the idea in a larger script is to basically repeat this for every chunk of the text. There's about uh, maybe around 10,000 tokens worth of text in touch rugby rules. So we just repeat this script in order to generate a full data set. Before I show you how to run all of this in script format, we need to get our server, our Llama 2 70B server up and running. We're going to use RunPod for that. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by creating an account using the affiliate link below, or you can just head over to runpod.io and sign up or log in. Once you're logged in, you want to head over to Secure Cloud. What I like to do here is use two of the RTX A6000s. I think this is a good compromise of speed and price. I'm going to click Deploy. And now I'm going to search for Trellis Research and select Llama 70B. This is a pretty uh, low click setup. All I have to do now is click continue and click deploy and that server will be up and running. Once your server is up and running, you'll want to grab this run pod ID here. This is the pod that's running 70B and take it back over to the script and put it into your .env file. Uh, I've created a sample.env. You'll need to rename that .env and you'll need to input here uh, equals and then paste in what your run pod ID is. All right, now that I've shown you in chat format how to convert from a raw data set to Q&A, I'm going to do the same using this script that will call on an API. Keep in mind that I have my run pod API up and running at this point, and so I'm ready to make calls. I'm going to call the script by running Python createqa.py and here I'm being told that there will be six questions generated for every 166 tokens. If I want more granularity for training, I could adjust that in my script. The API I'm going to use is runpod and I'm just going to process one chunk. This is a feature so that you can test out the script without having to run on the full data set. When you do run on one chunk, the full chunk will be printed here to the console so you can check it for accuracy. And what I'm expecting is for the first chunk of this raw training data set to be converted into question and answer format. And that should appear fairly promptly here. 
And so we have um, the questions appearing now uh, as we expected. And this is perfect because this is in a clean question answer format that will then be able to run another script on to convert it into a data set that looks just like this here, test or rather train.csv. It's a prompt completion data set that has the question as the prompt and it has the answer as the completion. So here's if we just run it on one chunk. I'll show you again if we run it now on all of the chunks. There's a little nuance here that I want to mention. I'll just type in all. So when we run on all the chunks, it's obviously going to have to repeat the same operation for each chunk of the text to generate a longer Q&A data set. But what we can do to speed that up is make multiple recurrent requests. Those requests are then batched together by the API automatically. I'm actually running eight requests in parallel. So I'm multiplying my throughput significantly. It's not quite an 8x throughput increase because it, it does slow down slightly the response of the API when you send through a larger batch, but uh, it's much better than just um, a linear increase in time. In fact, the total time for a response for eight might be double the time for a batch of one. So we'll give that a moment uh, to go through the full text. It's going to have to run multiple batches of eight and we'll come back to see the answers. Here we have a full Q&A set generated for our input. Uh, you can see here that we have probably around uh, 30 questions for the raw training uh, data set that I've put in. This is a subset of the entire rules. It's probably only about a third of the entire rules. But you can see that everything is formatted as expected and it's perfectly in shape so that we can run Python QA to csv.py. And that script will simply take these Q&A and convert them into a training data set. You can see actually we're getting about 46 questions coming out and they're all nicely formatted into a question followed by answer, which is exactly what we want if we're going to fine tune a chat model. I've shown you today how to use an open source model like Llama 270B to convert a raw data set into questions and answers for supervised fine tuning. So here come the pro tips. As I mentioned, parallelization of requests is valuable for increasing the throughput. Rather than just running one request at a time, you can ping your RunPod Llama 2 server many times in parallel so that you get faster throughput and faster completion of your Q&A data set. I found that I can actually get very similar speed to what I would with OpenAI, at least on the default rate limits for OpenAI servers. A more nuanced point I want to mention here is around the size of chunks that you should send to your RunPod server. This is basically a question of VRAM. When you're running your pod, which in my case has got two GPUs running, you can keep an eye here on the GPU memory used. The GPU memory is attributable to the base model when it's loaded, but it will also increase as you send a larger batch size or a larger context length in so if you send samples with longer context or you send more samples within each batch, that's going to take up more of your VRAM. So basically there's a trade-off here whereby if you increase your batch size to get faster throughput, or if you increase your context size, you will come up against limits of VRAM, which means you'll have to either use more GPUs, so you could use four or eight instead of two, or simply you can just hold back the batch size to something like eight and hold the context length back to about 500. Now, it is nice if you can use longer context length because it means that the language model can take into account a, long, a larger chunk when generating questions. Probably though, for a lot of text, chunks of 250 or 500 are going to be fine. Last off, just some notes on licensing. The whole idea of this video is that it gets you away from the licensing limits of using OpenAI for preparing data sets. Remember, you can't use OpenAI to do any training on models that will compete with OpenAI models. So Llama gets around that to some extent, but Llama itself only allows you to use Llama to train Llama models. If you wanted further flexibility, I think you probably would want to use an MPT model. You can also consider Falcon, although I noticed that some of the training datasets that are used for training Falcon 40B 
and for training the largest Falcon 180B have got some limitations for commercial use as well. So my recommendation would be if you're training Llama models, which a lot of you probably are, you can of course use Llama to prepare and clean data sets for Llama. Otherwise, if you want total flexibility, you might want to consider MPT.